All right, so this question is for both of you guys. How important is intermittent fasting for you? It's been huge for me. Um, you know, for me, it's it's really helped me control my calories more so than anything else. How about for you, Ansema? It's helped me control my calories. It's helped me control like my hunger levels. You know, I don't feel like I'm craving food all the time. It makes it easier. Yeah, and one thing that you might want to utilize during intermittent fasting is coffee because it just makes it that much easier. And then, you know, throwing something in your coffee will really help a lot too. Some people throw in butter. You can throw in MCT oil, like MCT oil powder from Perfect Keto yeah. is fantastic because it's got some really good flavor profiles to it. They have a vanilla, they have a salted caramel, they have a chocolate. Um, in addition to that, they also make a MCT uh, enriched uh, coffee blend That's uh, that can just be, it's instant coffee. You just uh, stir it up and it's uh, ready to go. So it already has the MCT oil powder in it. Again, that just makes the fast that much easier and you get some of the cognitive effects of, of uh, the MCT oil. And for those of you that are athletes, get that um, get the electrolytes. It has a lot of potassium, sodium. It's going to help you during your fast so you can perform better when you actually work out. Super beneficial. Yeah, those capsules work great, especially when you're on a ketogenic diet. Mm. You're on a low-carb diet. Carbohydrate helps hydrate the muscles, helps you to hold water. When you're not eating, those carbohydrates the only thing that's going to help you is something like these electrolytes from perfect keto so if you guys want to get in control of your calories like mark bell head over to perfectketocom slash power project at checkout enter promo code power project 10 for ten dollars off any order of forty dollars or more that's power project 10 for ten dollars off forty dollars or more all right we're here today in uh mr uh, mike ryan's house mike ryan has been a long time athlete long time trainer what I think is cool about the way that you train is that you still train today. Uh, it looks like you still train today, probably the way that you did when you played football. Yeah, absolutely. Nothing's changed. Uh, my mentality is the same. My uh, preparation's the same. I think every day is going to be game day, so fuck it. Yeah, Mike, <laughs> and no one's told you that it's over. <laughs> it's not no over. After this, I'm going to put on my game tape. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I would love to see that, actually. I That'd actually be cool. here's, here's my strategy. I, Al Bundy right here. Oh, without a doubt. I have one more year eligibility in college because I left early. <laughs> and Chip Kelly, the coach of UCLA, was my teammate. I'm going back to fucking UCLA. I'm going to have one more year. I want to be a 55-year-old freshman. That would be awesome. <laughs> Could you actually, like, do that? Is that? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Why not? Yeah. That would be great. You'd be able to handle it. I, totally. But you're lifting heavy. You're doing sprints. Yeah. What's, right. what's going on with the heavy stuff you've been doing lately? Um... It's, well, how'd this come to be? I know. It's like a, one of those epiphanies. Like, oh, my God, I'm going to be 54. Uh, will I ever be trained? Will I look back and say, shit, I wish I'd, I've, I would have done it then? One of the things that stuck with me when I watched that Ron Coleman video, mm. at the end of it all, they're talking about, man, you beat up. Was it worth it? All that, you know what I mean? And everyone's waiting for him to say, yeah, I never should have did that. His, his whole statement was like, man, I should have went for another rep with 800-pound squats. And I thought that was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's his only regret. He's like, oh, man, I should have went for the one. <laughs> you know what I mean? He can't even walk, can't even do anything. He didn't give a fuck. He just wanted that one extra rep. That when just you resonated were, with me. Maybe uh, like maybe five, ten years ago, you weren't really focused that much on sh- – I mean, you always moving around good weight, but you weren't really focused on strength, right? Yeah, not even close. Um, I was more – I premised it that I always wanted to be like the most conditioned athlete in the gym. So I could run five, seven, sometimes 10 miles a day and still, you know, have, you know, four or five squats for 10 reps or something. You know what I mean? That was like, all right, I'm, you know, I'm going to stay lean as fuck. Get closer. Yeah. All right. There we go. Yeah. So I can say, so I try and get, um, trying to be the most uh, efficient athlete in the gym. You know, I I always wanted to keep my cardio. So I was more of a cardio beast than a strength beast. Cause at that time, there's always just strong guys running around. So I want to be the hybrid. Yeah, but the last of the last couple of years, it's just like, you know, fuck this. Give me my last time to ever really train as heavy as I can. So I might as well go for it. What's the body weight at right now? Uh, probably right. Uh, this morning I was 218. That's awesome. This is the best I've ever seen you look. You look like you look like you weigh 240. You <laughs> look, <laughs> say, look it's fucking, massive. Yeah, you look thick, but you don't have yeah. a lot of body fat on you. So it's awesome. Yeah. It's called short shorts. That's the key. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I, look, I got to turn my mic up. Um, there's, there's not really any over 50 year olds that look anything like you. How the hell have you been able to, I mean, keep it all together for so long? Um, a lot of it's probably where I'm at because I'm in a gym, you guys know. It's a lot of just a bunch of young tigers, mm-hmm. you know, so I refuse to submit to anything that they're doing. I refuse to, you know, bow to their will. 
So I'm going to go in there and be like, all right, you guys are okay. Let me show you what an old fucking guy can do. Mm -hmm. So it's that constant drive, constant that motivation to really push me over the edge. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you are older than the guys around you? Oh, fuck yeah. I mean, I will never let them know, but they'll hear it now. I mean, I live more, I live, I mean, I'm in ice packs. I'm in ibuprofen. I'm I'm in heat packs. I'm in, you know, I'm in massage therapy, chiropractic, you know, it's like, fuck, I beat the hell out of myself, but I take care of myself. With that being said, like we just came back from Michael Hearn's place. He's about to be 51 and you're, you're 54. So uh, what have you been doing to be able to train so well this long? Because we'll see a lot of lifters in their fifties and they're not looking like you guys. Yeah. I I think a lot of it's education. And again, I'm pretty fortunate by being at Gold's gym and seeing, seeing the mic, seeing, seeing, uh, you know, smelly, seeing the real smart guys train heavy, but smart. You know what I mean? Uh, growing up, uh, when I was there in the early days, early days, you see, um, you know, guys beat the hell of themselves, and and you and you could watch their progression. I'm like, that guy's probably going to be hurt in a couple of years, and you could tell. I mean, ballistic movements, smashing, volatile movements. You know, there wasn't a lot of uh, uh, planning and strategy in what they're doing. Mm. So for me, I was like, all right, I was pretty strong, never the strongest. You know, pretty fit, never the fittest, and and that was okay for me. You know what I mean? I made a career out of it, and and now it's just like I said, toward the end, I'm just going to try and push it a little more and a little more and a little more. And I think um, not beating myself up, not in uh in the early days, I've never juiced or anything, so that was a big component why I think I have longevity in joints and injury free. What about now? Well, I take testosterone, so I guess if that's cheating, that's cheating. You know what I mean? I mean, is it, though? Who the hell knows? You know? But you, you held off for a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. The only reason I took it, because when I, I was uh, living in India, I caught hepatitis. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. And, and my, everything just fell apart. It was just, you know. What's hepatitis? It's a it's a liver disease, basically. Oh, yeah, so you can't, I mean. Where did you it, get it from? Yeah, you, Any idea? Just dirty food. Oh. You know what I mean? And, uh, actually, the gross part is it's basically from fecal matter. Yeah. Oh, you know what man. I mean? Because there's no signs in India uh, employees must wash their hands after they you know go to the bathroom. Yeah, so, yeah, it is gross. So your liver shuts down, and you're basically like a Chinese firework. Yeah, you got very, very sick, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're just shitting and puking for like fucking day after day. And you can't eat. You can't hold on to anything. So I was living off fucking carrots and rice for like three weeks and it was terrible oh it's my a, god that sounds awful like yeah. an awful day. <laughs> yeah well, i know you tell girls like oh i'd love to get it i mean because i lost almost 30 pounds mm. and i don't have 30 pounds to lose <laughs> shit what yeah. were you doing over there i was uh training bollywood and bollywood uh actors in fitness wow. got it yeah it was fun it was a great gig you know what i mean it's you got to travel the world mm-hmm. but with every plus is always the the downsides yeah yeah, yeah. you mentioned uh, earlier having uh you didn't want to have any regrets you know are there some things that uh you know, you wish that you would be doing instead, or do you, you know, do you love exactly what you're doing type thing? I mean, everybody always wants to like strive for more, obviously, but yeah, sure. you know, do you have any kind of things that you kind of wish oh, you I mean, after or co- something? You know, we always think back the old like, oh, what would happen if, you know what I mean? What would happen if I took theater when I first, you know what I mean? Instead of going to school and I'm out here and I see all these guys just rolling the dough, I'm like, fuck, I could have been an action hero. <laughs> you know, I saw Jason Statham over Arnold's house. I mean, he's five. Five, six and a half, you know, right, he's a right. peanut. I'm like, oh my God, I could have crushed this guy. That could have been my role, you know, but I never pursued acting. So, you know, it's always one of those things like, ah, I wish I should have tried it, but I'm very happy. You know, I love yeah. lifting weights. I love being in fitness. I'm passionate about training and, and, uh, and I like the core group of people I'm with because they're all into training. And I'm at the stage of my career that people, then when they engage me, it's like, all right, we're here to get a, a, a result. We're not here to talk about, you know, this current events and bullshit. You know what I mean? We're here to work. Have you ever had to fire a client before? Oh, totally. They're all just time. being a bag of shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you you know what I mean? yeah. Hit the bricks. Hit the bricks. Because uh, it's, all, well, as you know, training, it's all about energy. So if you get someone just coming that's going to constantly bitch and complain, bitch and complain, it's going to bring you down. So, I mean, after like 90 minutes with this person, I'm like, I'm fucking done. You're killing me. You know what I mean? I got other people who want to work hard, and you're just killing me. Yeah. What, what did the uh, What did the road to becoming a trainer look like? Like you just were just in the gym all the time, and then somebody asked you, like, "Hey, what are you doing?" Yeah, actually, that, it, it was a natural progression. I I used to run the goals in Venice, and um, right. I was always uh, like a thick fullback type. You know, I was I had like one or two abs, like probably like smelly, and. Uh, <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Very funny. You know, so it was, it was the thick fullback type, you know what I mean? Not vascular, but just thick. And all of a sudden, um, I started to learn how to eat. I studied nutrition. I, I, I learned proper training. And uh, the, the, the two most pivotal people in my career were Mickey Rourke and The, and the Rock. Because they saw me just, you know, training. They're like, fuck, dude, you're getting in shape. What are you doing? 
and I saw him, I just went through a whole educational process. I mean, it's not like the old days where you just eat five steaks and, and lift weights and hopefully everything comes together. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, there's, there's a whole science behind it. And uh, Dwayne was just like, fuck, you know, I'm wrestling, I'm trying to do movies. I don't know what to eat. I got to be in, I got to be in the desert in Arizona. Then I got to go to New York city for a, a main event. And then I got to cut promos and I, he goes, I'm, I'm a mess. I don't know what to do. And I'm like, I just kind of created this whole job. I'm like, well, who's you just talk to someone at universal, see if they'll put me on the payroll. And he, all of a sudden five minutes later, he called and there I am and mm. traveling with them, training with them, eating with them. And, and he was such a great catalyst. He's like, man, you, you got to talk to my buddy, Mike. So he came back to the gym and Mickey's just like, fuck Dwayne, you know what I mean? You're just getting shredded. You know what I mean? He used to be this massive guy, but you could see his physique physically changing. Yeah. So people like, you know, Mickey was like, muscles. He called me muscle. Muscles, you coming with me. You know what I mean? So I traveled with Mickey. Then things started taking off. Next thing you know, I'm getting called to be on the, the set of Fight Club, which was huge. You know what I mean? Because yeah. everyone was just jacked. And I mean, Brad Pitt was just shredded. That's Edward one of my favorite movies. That movie's awesome. Yeah, <laughs> it really was. It, it was it was just a, an amazing, I mean, it's like what, uh, 20 years later now, I think it is, yeah. just celebrating. Yeah, so that, that, was a, that was a wild time. And being with those guys was super fun. But then again, it was just like people like, well, well, who the fuck was working with those guys? You know, they got in shape. And also that's how my name got kicked around in uh, Bollywood. Did you get a chance to chain, train Brad Pitt? Brad was actually, he was more about nutrition. Because from he had a team of Irish boxers with him. Because mm. he was learning how to fight for a fight club. And then he was going to do snatch, which is all about, you know what I mean? Bare knuckles, pikey, right. crazy fights, you know. Mm-hmm. So he really want to really want to emphasize on having great hand, hand skills. And he did. I mean, you guys watch those movies. You can you know the guys know how to throw a punch. Mm-hmm. So that was his uh, whole repertoire. It's just, you know, I really want to, I just want to be super lean, but I keep my hand speed. But, but he didn't know what to eat, yeah. you know. So I'm just like, all right, well, try this, try this, you know. You know what I mean? Stay with, you know, lean meats, chickens, and everything. And he's like, well, i got to be skinny. But I'm like, you know, you got to eat, though. And these right. guys don't understand the bodybuilder principles. you got to eat to be lean. So, so he, I mean, he adopted it, and he dug it, and he was super cool. I mean, the first day on the set was just, like, the <clears throat> coolest thing. Because I work yeah, with... Yeah, you love, you love movies, so yeah, that must totally, have been yeah, like yeah, a dream yeah. come true yeah, for so, you. Yeah, I work, comics yeah I work with Edward Norton on um, American History X. So he packed on all his muscles. He's like, i got to peel it off. The whole prophet, the whole uh, storyline is like my, my character melts away. I got to be this, you know, he's, he's trying to explain it to me. It didn't make any sense. It's like it's a duality. I'm ripped in my, in my subconscious, in my, real, in my real life. I'm, a, I'm skinny, frail. I'm like, all right. He goes, but I don't want to eat. I'm like, you got to eat. He goes, but I don't want to eat. I'm like, you got to eat. You he know was I mean? surprisingly jacked in that movie. In American History yeah. X. Yeah, yeah, he got, yeah, he did. Bulked up, bulked up like a motherfucker for that. So for the other one, he had to peel it off. So when they call me down, I'm walking on the set. So I'm just, I'm just walking up, and I see, you know, Edward and Brad just sitting there, and they have a football. So I'm like, oh, fuck. Kind of excited, kind of, you know what I mean, Brad Pitts. He's just the coolest fucking guy in the world. Edward's super cool to me, you know. So I'm walking up. I'm probably like 40 yards away. All of a sudden, fucking Brad Pitt just rifles a football at me. So I'm like, bam, I just catch it, and I tuck it. So I just walk up. <laughs> and so I just hand it to him, and he goes, you can stay. <laughs> I was like, yeah, fuck, cool. Boom, <laughs> you know, initiation by football. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. What did you think of uh, Brad Pitt uh, going against uh, Bruce Lee in Once oh, Upon a Time in Hollywood? I, that was, <laughs> I love that scene. Oh, my God. That, that guy, is, he went from cool to ultra cool. But I just love the people who are always like, I mean, martial arts is great. And I'll never knock anyone for anything. But when people always say Bruce Lee can beat up Muhammad Ali, I was just like, finally, he goes, "You're just a little man who talks too much." Oh, <laughs> you know I, I, mean? I thought, yeah, I thought yeah. that was amazing Especially too. Especially you, because you're a boxer. You yeah. know what I mean? And and it's just the old adage: a, a a good little guy can never beat a good big guy. I mean, it's in every sporting. You know, very rarely right. does that happen. Yeah, yeah, that, that was one of the best you scenes think, ever. Uh, you think he'll win an Academy Award? Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, for sure. He I deserves it. Kinda, I think he's got that sucker yeah, on lockdown. He deserves it. By the way, you said that. After I don't know if it was after Fight Club you said, but all of this that led to Bollywood. Like it was Bollywood a year, like multiple years or what, yeah what yeah yeah. There? Well, what happened was right after that, you know, I mean, I got call, I was getting calls, and I'm just thinking, you know, probably like you guys, what the fuck is Bollywood? They just sing and dance, no one works out, you know what I mean? <laughs> so this one cat wanted to come down. His name was John Abraham, and he was like in this upcoming prominent actor, and uh, he really wanted to be the face of fitness for India. So he calls me and he's like, oh, you know, I'm a Bollywood actor. I really want to get in shape. I really want to, you know, learn the lifestyle, the bodybuilding principles. I'm like, if you want to do it, you got to come to Gold's Gym. Mm-hmm. He's like, really? I said, yeah, fuck yeah. You know what I mean? You really, if you're, if you're serious about it, then you got to show up here. So, and he did. 
like a week later, this son of a wow. bitch showed up, and, and I was like, I was so impressed because I tried to kill him, you know what I mean? And I did kill him. And then right after, you know, there was the old, the old days. You would train at Gold's for a couple hours, and you go to the firehouse. Mm-hmm. So we, excuse me, we, we train, and I'm, I'm killing this guy, and he's taking. I'm like, wow, this guy, this guy is really enthusiastic about changing the physique and, and really, you know, leading fitness, leading into, into the whole fitness uh, generation. So I was super excited. I said, let's go to the firehouse and eat. He's like, cool, you know. So we go there, and this is this is the first day. We go there all of a sudden. Hogan walks in, Cena walks in, Undertaker walks in. Um, Goldberg walks in and Kevin Nash walk in and I'm just like, I'm like, Mike, come join us, you know? So this guy, you know, wrestling is huge in India. So he is like, fucking, oh my God, this is the coolest <laughs> fucking, this is the coolest day ever. He's like, all right. So all of a sudden we come to order and he's like, you know, mostly vegetarian, but he'll have like fish or something, you know I mean? They're very, they're very cautious of their diets. So I'm like, well, let me order for you. I said, we definitely get a, definitely put on weight. You know what I mean? You're just too skinny. He's like six one and probably like 160. So I had to bulk this shit out of him. I'm like, you're going to get a bodybuilder breakfast. I'm going to throw pancakes at you, egg whites. We'll get you a side of two sides of a salmon and uh, and probably, you know, get some greens and you have some broccoli and, and you know, we'll see how it goes. So I order all this food, you know, and he just sits down and he sees Hogan. He sees Cena and everyone's, I mean, there's so much food. He's just like, he's just overwhelmed. And all of a sudden he gets his meals and he's like, is this for like the week? <laughs> I, go, I go, no, John, this is what you eat right now. He's like. Oh no, I fucking can't do that. <laughs> then of course Hogan and Cena's like, eat up skinny. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, he just a pile of food. Yeah. What's uh what's your eating like nowadays? I see you have some peanut butter cups sitting out there. Like <laughs> yeah. most people that like are on a diet or that bodybuilder that are in good shape, they usually don't have shit like that laying around. Yeah. I'm all about sensible eating. It really is. I, I don't prescribe to any diet. I mean, so many people do so many fucking diets. It's just that's not me. If I'm gonna have a shitload of Reese's peanut butter cups. I'm just going to work that much harder in the gym. I remember you telling me before, like, just don't ever trust anybody who doesn't have a drink. Like, <laughs> he's like, there's something wrong with that person. He's like, you should be able to just have a fucking drink here and there. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you can have a Reese's here and there. You know, yeah. Life, life's too short. You can enjoy right. the finer things. All right, all right. Gonna... Stop twisting my arm. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a, a bowl of peanut butter cups. <laughs> there you go. You're going to have one of those uh, weed candies I have for I you. I know. I saw that. Those are in SEMA's. <laughs> No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so I could, like I could tell you're lying. Okay, how, for your you're diet, stuttering. has it tra- has it like transitioned over the years, or have you just been yeah. doing this? No, 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 I I don't exhume as much calories. Before I was just it was so calorie conscious. I'm like I get at least five thousand a day. I got to eat every two and a half three hours, constant, constantly, constantly. That's when I was you know I had contract work, so I'm shooting all the time, mm-hmm. and uh, and it was just to me it was crucial because I didn't. And I'm not, you know what I mean? I didn't take drugs. I was getting drug tested. So it was going to be so much fucking harder, I thought, to do it naturally. And, and I and I stand by it. I think it is harder. So it was, I was always watching my diet. Then as it, you know, I get a photo shoot every once in a while. But I just, I tailor off it. You know what I mean? And, and if I get work lined up or if I set a short goal for myself, that's when I'll really watch, watch what I do. Because last year, um, I did a little experiment. It was fun. Last winter, by, by January, or was it? Uh, probably by February 1st, I was like, 235 almost like 240 and i said i'm gonna do a shoot in two months and i got down to 210 and i was pretty fucking shredded and it was just obviously just cleaning up my diet because my training was pretty intense all the time so i just really watched my diet something i really loved that was cool is uh maybe it was like i remember two years ago or so or maybe or maybe it was yeah maybe it was around the time i was doing the bodybuilding show i can't remember but i came down and uh i was training and i was getting in getting in better shape and you at the time were a little bit out of shape for mike ryan standards yeah sure and uh you were like fuck man you're like i'm so fat you're like i gotta fucking do something and i that meant the world to me because i've always looked up to you so much because you know i went i remember that exactly we're in the third room in the gym yeah and i was like oh you were doing cardio i think (laughs) no i was and i was like the fucking smell is i'm a shredded it's more shredded than me i was pissed i went home i I think i ran the block for like 10 hours that was really cool to me because i was like a 19 year old kid coming into golds and that's that's how i got to know you and i was always like man i'll never i'll never be able to be built like that guy that's shit He's shredded. He's got veins popping out everywhere. <laughs> you know, you said something. I don't know if it was before the podcast started or when we were already on air, but you said that you wanted to be like the most jack guy, but also the most fit guy and running five to seven miles a day. Now, you're a big dude. Were, yeah. you, were you running yeah, that yeah. much or are you? It, that, which, which comes to a great story. This is probably maybe probably like five or seven years ago. Time, time escapes me. I've always known Arnold Schwarzenegger forever. I used to run Gold's Gym and it was always just a hello, hello, how you doing? 
very, very formal, never nothing. So it was one of these days. It was, uh, you know, I just, you know, training hard. I'm probably like 220, and I'm like, by past, uh, if you know any, so I'm probably like about five miles from my from the gym running, or four miles, and I'm and I'm running, and, and it's early. By now, it's probably like only five. Yeah, it's probably like 5.30 in the morning, and I see two guys on bicycles riding toward me, and uh, I'm like, I'm slowing down, and they're picking up, and I see it's Arnold and his bodyguard. So I'm like, no way. So all of a sudden, he rides right at me, and he just immediately stops. He sees me running. He sees me running, and his first reaction is like, are you all right? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, are you running? I said, uh, well, what do you mean? He's like, you're, you go to the gym's like four miles from here. What do you mean? you? Why are you running? I'm like, Arnold, this is, this is my cardio. He's like, what? I said, this is my cardio. I'm, I'm going to run. He's like, so are you going to take an Uber home? <laughs> I go, no, I'm going to run back. He's like, it's like eight miles. I'm, I'm like, yeah. He's like, so you're going to go back and then you're going to train? I said, no, actually, I already worked out. He said, five dirty. I said, yeah, I trained at four. So you trained at four and then you run and you're going to run eight miles and you go back and you're going to train. And he goes, fuck off <laughs> and he rode away and i was just like oh my god oh my god this is the greatest thing ever arnold just told me to fuck off it it's like if a tree falls in the woods does anyone hear it yeah. i'm like it's 5 30 in the morning there's no one here he just told me to go fuck myself i'm like that is the greatest thing that ever happened to me I'm, i was content right there you know what i mean i'm like that was awesome i sprinted back i'm like just cracking up i'm like that was so awesome you know so the next day i'm in the gym just training all of a sudden poking the back i turn around it's arnold he's like did you run? <laughs> I said, uh, actually, uh, it's I'm, like keeping tabs on yeah, you. I love yeah, this. totally. Yeah. I said, well, I'm going to run a little. He's like, how much? I said, uh, well, you know, I did eight miles yesterday, so I'm, I'm going to probably tailor back just maybe four, do a half after. What are you doing for weight? I said, uh, you know, it's, it's back day. So I'm, I feel pretty good. I'm trying to go, you know, heavy deads and stuff like that. How much? I said, well, I, you know, if I get, you know, 500, I'll be happy. He's like, keep it up and he walked away and i'm like fuck this is this is wild you know what i mean so the next day rolls around and uh he comes up to me again i'm like oh fuck i'm like i'm like the hot girl i'm like this is awesome i got arnold hitting on me all day long i'm fucking so excited (laughs) he's like mike i go yeah he goes you like ufc i'm like i love ufc he's like come to the house tonight i'll have it on and i'm like really he's like you heard me and he walks away so i'm like fuck so i see his bodyguard i'm like Give me, give me the address. He gives me the address. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> but I'm, I don't know if he's fucking with me. And I'm, I'm afraid to tell people, you know what I mean? Because I'm like, everyone's like, and I usually host p- people come here for the, they're like, you're going to UFC. They're like, ah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling good. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah totally. Like, yeah, I was just like, really? I said, yeah, yeah, I got to call out. <laughs> you know what I mean? I just don't know what to do, but I'm a, I'm a nervous wreck, so I'm pacing around all day. I was just like that anxious little schoolgirl, you know what I mean? And you're like, is it going to be just me and him? <laughs> well, 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 that's what I'm taking. I'm, I'm like, what is going on here? You know what I mean? He's so, you know what I mean? There's never a full explanation of anything. So I'm like, fuck it. I get the direction. So I drive up. And if from his house, there's a guard to get onto a street. His street is exclusive. It's just like only four people. There's Dr. Dre. There's Arnold. There's uh, just like Tom Brady used to live there. It's like wicked exclusive neighborhood. It's the only like gated street in Brentwood. So I drive up. I'm like, oh, fuck a gate. You know, the guy comes out. Can I help you? I said, yeah, Mike Ryan for Arnold. He's like, hold on. I'm like, oh. Fuck, this is going to be so humiliating. Like, I'm busted. Yeah, yeah, like, I got to turn around all of a sudden. He's like, so he's like, oh, okay, you know, we'll open up the gate. He's like, you know where you're going? I'm like, yeah, of course. Uh, (laughs) I kind of forget, though. He's like, it's the first house on the left. I said, I know that. (laughs) (laughs) So I drive up, and I still, you know what I mean? I drive up, and all of a sudden, his house is there, but there's a gate there. So I'm like, oh, fuck, what do I do? Do I just, I can't beep, you know what I mean? Be like a goofball. So. I said, I literally pulled over. I'm like, I'm just going to climb over and say, oh, the gate was half open and I walked through. You know what I mean? I'm thinking of all these lies. I'm just like, so all of a sudden I get out of my car. All of a sudden the gate starts unlocking. I'm like, oh, fuck. So I run back into my car. So I'm sitting there running to be like idling. Like, dip, 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 like I've been here the whole time. Yeah. So the gate's open up and the driveway's like 100 yards. There's a guy's waving me up. So I drive all the way up. I'm like, oh, that, well, fuck it, driving. I'm seeing the, the whole spread and everything. He's got a statue of Abraham Lincoln. It's just the coolest fucking spread. Whoa. Yeah, it's wicked. So uh, I get out, and uh, he takes my car, and all of a sudden, his security guard, Dita, is there. He's like, Mike. I'm like, Dita. I'm like, oh, cool, man. 
He's like, uh, come on out back. Everyone's out back. I'm like, all right. So we start going out back. He's like, uh, have you been in for I said, no. So we start walking through the house. I'm like, I mean, it's just, it's just a gorgeous spread, but it's so eclectic. I mean, he's, he knew every president. So we had presidential pictures and, you know, artifacts and miscellaneous stuff. Then he had all his, you know, he's an art fanatic and his sculptures and his paintings. I'm so, I mean, I'm just overwhelmed, you know? So I go, I'm like, He's like, oh, he's out back. So out back, he has this giant screening room. And it's all these big chairs. And all of a sudden, I just see Arnold's head and uh, his buddy, Rolf Mueller, who's a big German bodybuilder. They've been friends forever. And they're smoking cigars. I'm like, oh, fuck. I'm like, Jesus, that's why I'm like, I'm like, oh, sorry, I'm so early. He goes, what do you mean? I go, well, where is everyone? It's a UFC party. He's like, no, Arnold just invited you. Shit. And I'm like, I, 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 <laughs> I didn't know how to react. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, wow, that is so fucking cool. Like inside of me, I'm doing like cow wheels. I'm going nuts inside, you know. But I'm trying to maintain a decorum of, you know, oh, that's cool, you know. So I said, so I walk in. Dino's like, hey, Arnold, Mike's here. He's like, good. What? Well, glad you can come. What are you doing? He, he's like, you like UFC? It just started. Come on, you want a cigar? And I'm like, if I want a cigar, I don't want to say offer me a cigar. You bet your fucking ass, I want a cigar. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I grab a cigar, and you know, it's like him, and I, so I don't know what to do. So I go to sit like in the father's side. He's like. Where you going? I, I go, I don't know, just going to sit down. He's like, ah, sit over here. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So he sits next to me, and he was just the gracious host. You want to know about my family, me, my upbringing, just so inquisitive and, and questioning everything I do, and just just like really endearing, like, you know what I mean? Not like some guys engage in conversation. Hey, how you doing? You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, tell me about yourself. Where are your parents? You know, why? how'd you get the passion for training? What, what what makes you go to the gym? You know what I mean? It's like almost like a podcast. He was just grilling me, and I was fucking. I'm just answering these questions, and of course, I'm like, I got a million questions for you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm like, well, what is you, what was your first inspiration? So he's like, let me take you walk through my house. So he took me up to his house. He has this wall of all inspirations, and it was um. He goes years ago when I was a little boy in Austria, I saw a picture of uh, Steve Reeves. Doing the famous, you know what I mean, Vacuum, Steve, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. Steve Reeves, and, and like his, uh, then there's like a poster for one of his movies when he was like a Roman or something, Hercules, or yeah, something. yeah, absolutely, yeah. So I was like, no way, and he goes, and he shows me the posters. He goes, when I made it, when I realized I made it, is when I've actually had someone find the original magazine that I saw when I was a kid. And he has that framed. He has pictures of this guy framed, and he just has things that inspire him framed in his house i'm like oh man this guy is just so fucking cool he's awesome he's constantly motivated and he's a real salt of the earth kind of guy so it was unbelievable have you noticed that to be a common thread amongst because you, you've uh, been around a lot of really successful people you mentioned the rock earlier yeah. um that they ask questions because i i've i've kind of found that when we were podcasting and we we get around uh jay cutler and we get around these uh great people they're like, you know, they're asking us a lot of yeah. questions, and we're like, "This is Jay Cutler. Why does he care what we do?" I know, no, it is. It's, it's it's always when the higher level that you are, it seems the more respectful that you end up being. You know, it's like when you when you go on sets and you meet, you know, years ago, like uh, De Niro had to use my brother's dog for a scene, so my brother's just like, "Hey, De Niro's want to use the dog. You want to <laughs> go in there?" I'm like, "This is fucking wild." You know what I mean? You go there and you get all these bit actors like, "Who's this guy? Who's this guy?" And all of a sudden, Robert De Niro's like. I appreciate you. Let's go for dinner tonight. You know, I appreciate you letting you use my dog. Let me take you guys out for dinner tonight. I'm like, oh, that was fucking pretty awesome. You know what I mean? The same thing. It was just cordial, you know, sweet, charming. And, you know, it's always like the guys who've made it have a real appreciation. It's always like the guys who have something to prove in life are usually, usually dicks. They're too anxious and yeah. shit and too mad to yeah. even think yeah. about how you're doing. So they're just focused in on what they're doing. Yeah. And it and, and usually affects their career somewhere down the line. So. How cool was it, like, uh, you know, your passion for, for lifting and all this stuff, and then all of a sudden, like, yeah, you are with, with Arnold and stuff, oh, but yeah. but you've been able to, t- I mean, we won't give away too much of where we are, but, like, this place is amazing. Like, <laughs> oh, and it's like, you know, you're like, oh, what are you up to, Mike? Like, ah, you know, just lifting weights, just digging yeah. around. It's like, fuck, man, that's amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, even now, like, do you still get fired up to go to the gym and, you know, you still wake up in, like, Damn, this is my life. All the time. I mean, I try not to, I mean, you get caught up in, in the moment, but I try to be a thankful person and feel like I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. And it's all, uh, one of the things that Arnold said to me one time, which was which was very touching, because he was talking about, you know, everyone's like, oh, lose this, lose that. He's like, Lou Ferrigno works hard at everything he does. He works hard to be a better man all the time, and he works for his family. 
He goes, I will always love and respect Lou Ferrigno. And I was like, wow, because everyone's always like, oh, he's the, you know, he's your antithesis, your, your antagonist of life, you know. He never made it. He's angry. He's jealous. And Arnold was just like, no, oh, fuck, you know what I mean? Lou Ferrigno works hard. And, and, and whenever Arnold talks about hard work, you know, it's, it's really cool, and I like to feel it resonates with me. And I think one of that's probably one of the reasons why we're friends, you know. He's like, well, there's a fucking guy, you know what I mean, who's just going to work hard every day at everything he does. What do they say? Real, recognize real, right? Yeah. You, when people are, you know, working hard, other people are going to recognize yeah, that. and they see it, too. And, and that's, and what, again, I mean, it's not the Arnold show, but he's just, whenever he introduces me, you know, we're at his house, for, like I said, for, for our uh, Christmas party, and there's Clint Eastwood. This Jay, I mean, this is the coolest of the cool, and Arnold's like, this is my friend Mike. He's the best trainer ever. This guy will just show up. He'll run for miles or lift miles. He's just crazy. He doesn't even bullshit. He just, he just <laughs> oh, goes, God. you know, he just goes. And Clint Eastwood's Clint Eastwood like... Uh, that's right, huh? I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> Clint Eastwood, damn. Yeah, totally. I mean, got to be the coolest of the cool. The coolest of the cool. What's uh, what's a good movie you've seen recently? Because I know you're, uh, you're the, my muscle the, critic. The muscle critic, yeah. Well, uh, I guess since it's, it is um, award season, yeah. Uh, the Joker with uh, Joaquin Phoenix. Oh, yeah. This know? is like the Super Bowl for my wife. She freaks out. She loves watching the shit. Oh, yeah. She throws a big party. Yeah. <laughs> To me, the movies aren't the same like they used to be because everyone who has a streaming network makes movies, and a lot of them, I think, are watered down, and they're just... Ah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? They, they sacrifice a lot to, to get it out there. Man, how many different streaming things are there? Oh, it's I mean, ridiculous. you could spend like a thousand yeah, bucks like, a month to get yeah, everything. I got Apple, I got fucking Hulu, I got more shit on this thing all day long, yeah. And then you still turn it on, you're like, there ain't shit on. <laughs> totally. And I stop bitching. I put it online, I'm like, who's got something to watch? This fucking shit's garbage. It's hard to keep track of what, like, you know, someone mentions something that you like, yeah. I need to check that out. And then you yeah. never like write yeah. it down or whatever. And then you sit there Forget in front the- of the TV with a blank stare. <laughs> You're like, totally. ah, I don't know what And then you doing. put on sports. <laughs> yeah. Yo, you just go to ESPN let that thing just... Uh. Or I, go to, or I go to my old uh, Price is Right tapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's almost too much shit to... I mean, there's too much TV, yeah. but... So then what Well, about, it's funny, because that's like, that's like the information and training and, and, and dieting yeah. and supplements. A, with all, the, all this information out there, there's too much... Perfect yeah. analogy. Yeah, too much information. There's so much misinformation. It's overwhelming. Yeah, so then what are your thoughts on, like, Instagram now? You know, because, oh, like, that wasn't around. I know, totally. You know, so... It's, you know, it's... For me, I could be, like, one of these sour apple guys be like, that fucking sucks. You know what I mean? I had to literally go to Joe Weider's office in front of like 13 guys, strip down to my underwear, and have him critique me while I read something to see if I was articulate. You know what I mean? So I'm sitting there wait, like, wait, oh, why'd you even have to do that? They, 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 yeah, I know. So, well, I was the men's fitness spokesman for five ah. years. So, they, and you had to go. If you were a bodybuilder, if you were in fitness, you had to go to the office. And it was it was a round table. And guys were just like, you know, they're drinking coffee. They didn't even give a fuck what you look like. They, you know what I mean? You know, so you're trying to talk and be articulate and tell about your training, your, your philosophies, your principles the whole time while flexing in your fucking underwear, you know? Wow. So, so when I log on to Instagram, I'm like, Fitness model, fitness model, fitness model. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are they a fitness model of? You take a picture and you put it on Instagram. Does that quantify you as a fitness model, you know? Mm-hmm. But then again, half of these cocksuckers are making more money than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, isn't it crazy? It's crazy. Uh, it's crazy the amount of money that has come into fitness. But I think it's, it's, uh, it's amazing because what it's going to do is it's going to allow for a lot of companies to come in and, and be prosperous and, and hopefully help America to stop being so fat. You know, there's a lot of like quest bars and treats and protein snacks and stuff like that. And I think, I don't think, you know, your diet should have too much of that stuff, but I think it's great that, uh, you know, we're starting to have some solution to how addicted people are to food. Yeah. Well, there's more awareness too, right? You know, bring more awareness. It's just how you said it. I mean, if you have a protein cookie, that's a good alternative to a regular right. Oreos. But I do love my Oreos. Yeah. Have you been able to capitalize on any of like the, the digital platforms now? Yeah, somewhat. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I guess I have a good, like I don't have a million people, not even close, but the people that follow me engage and that's, and that's how they go by, you know, like these companies, like we know this is a lot of responses, a lot of gauge engagement. So I, I get hit up by some really cool companies to rep their brands or try their gear. So that's the fun stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate to rewind here, but I, I want to ask you this because um, a lot of guys that, you know, listen to the show, they want to be jacked, they want to be strong, but they also want to be fairly conditioned. Now, you were running a lot. Yeah. Did it take you a while to be able to get to that point? Because Mark's starting to run too. And I'm yeah. just like, guys think that, oh, if I run a few miles, yeah. I'm going to lose all my gains. No, nah, fuck no. It, it takes a while. I mean, your body is, your body, it, it takes forever to understand your body. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You can be training for 20, 30 years and think, 
and all of a sudden you you fine tune something like holy fuck it took me thirty years to figure this out you know what I mean that's it's 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 an ongoing process so back then when I was running all those miles I was like man I'm shredded I'm shredded I feel good all of a sudden I was like you should go back to hit for a couple months I'm like that's ah, only twenty minutes that ain't gonna work all of a sudden I'm tighter and leaner just by mm-hmm. cutting back on my cardio I was like motherfucker I've been beating myself up yeah. for so long and running you know what that's a a really good example of so somebody may have heard that and they're like oh I gotta do hit yeah but the hit will only be effective if you haven't done it in a while. Absolutely. You're not used to it. It's, sure. a, it's a new stimulus. Yeah. And then, you know, someone even like myself, I might say, oh, you know, I, I started doing a carnivore diet. And uh, that's going to be this, you know, huge change for me. But it, it's going to be the actual change. And Joel Green talked about that a little bit on the podcast saying it's the actual change and not necessarily just the diet. It's not, you know, it's not the change uh, from doing steady state to hit. It's the fact that there was a change. Yeah, it's a stimulus. And I, people ask me, what do I do for cardio? And I, I always say, equate it to it's the same as weights. Variety is the key. Switch it up. Your body will be stagnant. If you jog, if you walk on the beach every day, you're not going to get the results. Switch it up. We've been getting uh, this question that keeps popping up every so often. Um, like People want to know like how often they should bulk and then shred down and then timing-wise and whatnot. Um, obviously, you have plenty of experience with that. Like It's going to vary from person to person. Yeah. But for yourself, what have you found the most successful? Well, for me, everything's all goal based. It's like, what's my goal? Like when I was talking earlier, like the winter, I was like, man, I just want to get as heavy and strong as I can. So that's that's my bulking phase. You know what I mean? I was throwing up good lifts. Summer, and then I dropped. Like last year, I, I dropped almost you know twenty, thirty pounds within two months because I wanted to get as lean and as hard as I can and trying. You know what I mean? Trying get all my social media content out there. You know, for pictures and all that other crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's it's all goal based, you know. People are like, oh, should I bulk? Should I do this? I mean, everyone's got to have a goal. You can't just wake up and say, I'm going to train today. You know, have you ever this. shared your, uh, you know, your training information out with people? Like, do you have a PDF or you have a website? No, or? you know, I'm, and I'm the worst at that. And if anyone wants to help me, I'm all fucking for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because especially now, I get I get hit up by more guys. You know, getting into forties, and it's like. Jesus Christ, how do I do this? And I, my whole thing is like, don't quit on yourself. I don't think there's a 50 year old out there that wouldn't want to look like the way you're looking. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, so there's a 34 year old right here <laughs> would instantly trade. Like, just shit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do. I, I, I do need help in the, in the whole digital, you know, the websites and the mm-hmm. online presence. Yeah. We got some people that might be able to help you. Yeah. Out. Thank you guys. How about, how about a fucking old man? <laughs> on that yeah. note of a uh, bulking real quick, cause uh, we got a lot of guys that, uh, uh, they talk to us about this. What do you think should be like the general upper limit of like, okay, you need to stop gaining weight and maybe you need to just chill here for a bit. Is there a percentage yeah, that you're thinking chill. of? Oh, yeah. like- <laughs> and for me, like I said, it's just goal based. If it, it was funny years ago, there used to be the super lean guy in the gym. He had one of the best bodies and he, he wanted to be a W not, not you, but he wanted to be a wrestler. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, he did. And he went from this, like I was like, man, this guy has the nicest physique ever. Yeah. And he went from like probably 215, 220 shredded to like 280, 290. It just blow up. You know what I mean? But that's that's what he wanted. That's what his goal was. And I was like, oh, man, you fucking look horrible, <laughs> you know. But he did. He ended up being, you know, a jobber in wrestling. So yeah. he was happy. He, he made, made it. Yeah, you know, he did what he did. Yeah. yeah. So look, looking forward in the future of page like 200 and something of this PDF that you're going to put together. And it's uh, Mike Ryan's strategy for bulking. So how does Mike Ryan recommend that somebody do clean bulk? Hey, it, well, it's just constant feeding. You yeah. know, I mean, constant feeding. And don't be, I mean, you can't be afraid of carbohydrates. You have mm-hmm. to devour carbohydrates. They're going to fool you up and they're going to, I mean, they're going to pack weight on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just like traditional chicken and rice. but just- ch- Oatmeals, rice, pastas, you know, heavy foods, steaks, you know, eat to win. You yeah. Eat like a lineman. Yeah, you know we, I mean? we had uh, Chris Aceto on the sure. podcast. And it was so funny because it's like, yeah, how do we get big? You eat like a bodybuilder, just more. Yep. It's like, <laughs> basically. Anything else? Nope, nope. Nothing's changed. Yeah, right. Yeah. But everybody still, they want yeah. to find, like, oh, but, well, I want to hear Mike's answer. Yeah. You know, I want to hear what his trick was to maintain yeah. it for so long. There's a, there's a great, um, when you watch Pump and Iron, everyone's ever seen it, but there's the, the uncut version. You ever see that one? I haven't seen that. I, I might have. I they they have show one that. scene where they actually go to a restaurant and eat. And it is the no, coolest thing. You remember that scene? Mm-hmm. They, it's the yeah. coolest scene ever. Like they sit down and the guy's like, I'll have five cheeseburgers, two steaks, and a bowl of rice. And the waitress is just like, her her pencil's running thin because there's like <laughs> 10 guys. And everyone, in the, and it, the whole thing was like, the bodybuilders before, they, they're like, we would go to eat and people would just be like, other tables would be like, did you hear what they fucking ordered? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And it was, these guys just devoured 
so much food. It was insane. Yeah. Yeah. So the game hadn't changed. The game back hasn't then. changed. No, <laughs> it is eat to win. You know what I mean? You want to put on size, you got to eat. Yeah. No, that was a pun for game changers, but we, uh, I guess we won't go there. Did you? Uh, <laughs> did you? Uh, well, here's one thing about game changers, which is, um, you know, I mean, most of the stuff was uh, endurance. They had mountain climbers, and of course, you need carbohydrates for, you know, what I mean, you could be you could be a, pan, a plant based person if everything's all endurance. But they really didn't highlight too many physique people. You never said this guy is a vegan, and look how good his physique is. It really wasn't highlighted at all, and I was I was like. You know what I mean? Why don't you show the emphasis of like most people really want to look good, mm-hmm. then run an ultra marathon, and they don't they don't they don't enter that at all. It was all about you know high performance, the strong man. You know what I mean? He could lift. He could hit. And his whole offense was he had better conditioning. You know, he was carbo based. I mean, carbohydrate based. He was he could carry things more than most people. You know? Yeah, that you know when you whenever you're trying to just to like you know, use a person as an example, it's sometimes not great because you don't really know what other things that mm-hmm. person did. And in the case of, of like, course. Conor McGregor, they were like, oh, he eats meat and then he lost oh, that, his yeah. fight. And that was, like, yeah, that was insane. You but, know like, I mean? Conor McGregor is, like, one of the greatest of all time, so yeah. he's not a good example of, like, showing a loser. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, meat. but no one yeah. even talks about the fight prior. I mean, he was fighting a bigger guy. You yeah, know what I mean? He, right. he was at a lower weight. You know I mean? The other guy was probably, by the time they fought, I mean, he was probably 20, 30 pounds heavier. What did you think of his recent showing oh, it was uh he, he was amazing but i think it was you know it was a hand-picked opponent yeah. you know cerrone's tough but he he doesn't yeah. he doesn't have the skills yeah the next the next one's going to be brutal whoever fights next yeah well it's got to be habib that that's, has to be the fight that's yeah. what everyone wants to see you're a big fan of like ufc and obviously like you know you, you do conditioning have you ever or do you do any martial arts of any kind oh my god this, i got a great story oh another mike ryan great story <laughs> So years ago, this is the story when you beat up Hoist Gracie. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I probably <laughs> oh, told it before. Yeah, basically, oh, UFC was started at Gold's Gym because I didn't know who Hoist Gracie was. He's like, "Hey, can we do a seminar here?" And I'm like, hey, "He's tall." I'm like, "What do you do?" He's like, "Ah, Brazilian, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu." You know? <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, "What is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu?" <laughs> you know? So I bring a mat, we roll around. You know? So I was like, "All right." So of course, back then, I'm you know just all this football weight. So I'm like, "What do you want me to do?" He's like, "Ah, just come at me." So I'm like, you're you're tall, but I'm just gonna. I said honestly, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just tackle you and throw you down. He's like, okay, tackle me, throw me down. You know, so I did. I ran at him, tackle him, threw him down, and I'm top of him. Next thing you know, he's choking me out with like his sleeve. I'm like, ah, what the fuck you doing? <laughs> and he's like, you got to tap. I'm like, tap what? But bear on tap. What the fuck? You can stop it. You know what I mean? And so he's like, uh, I was like, well, that was pretty crazy. I said, uh, and I was with Stallone's bodyguard at the time, training, who was a big fucking Samoan dude. I said, well, what, what, you know, I pulled the old wise ass. I said, well, what would you do about him? He said, the same thing. He just come out, you know, I do bazin jiu-jitsu. <laughs> you know, so, so I go, uh, I go, no, I'm going at him. So the same thing. This big guy's game and just fucking mauled him. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I'm thinking for like four or five seconds, I'm like, oh, my God, he's, he's going to get killed. <laughs> same thing, slides out. He's got his gi and he's fucking taking like his, it was like his foot is choking. And the big guy's like, what the fuck? Stop the motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it was crazy. And I was like, that's insane. I said, you know, Pete Krumkowski owns gold. So he's like, no. I said, he loves crazy shit like this. You're, you know what I mean? You're not more than 180 pounds. And you just went through, you know, I was probably 210. And the other guy was like 280. I said, you in two seconds. That was fascinating. So uh, he came down and met with Pete Krumkowski. And Gold's Gym sponsored UFC 1. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. Yep. And what I get for that? Choke, <laughs> choked out. <laughs> Real shrewd. <laughs> A pat on the back. Totally. Shamrock meets. When you were uh, when you were working at Gold's Gym, um, you, you know you were the manager there for several years, right? Yes. And uh, you know during that time, like, what are some of the kind of craziest things that you've seen? You know oh, that yeah. gym is so that gym yeah, is so like it, it's just not. I mean, you could you could walk you could walk through the place naked probably, and no one would even notice because there's so much weird shit going on. Oh, and there has. I mean, there's, there was a lady that ran in. She just wanted to get fucked by a bodybuilder. She just ripped her clothes off and chased bodybuilders. That happens quite a bit. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's pretty common at most gyms. <laughs> yeah, it was it was just wild. I mean, it, there's been so many lunatics, so many crazy people, so many. Be- it was funny. I got my statue of Bane over here. Yeah. So uh, when they did the movie, the guy who played it was this was this strong man called Jeep Swenson. Jeep Swenson was like six eight, four hundred pounds. He was massive, greatest name ever. Yeah, totally. And he just had a ponytail on the side of his head that went all the way to the floor. And and for his career, he just bred tigers. He he would come in just 
slashed to death always you know you don't open up his wounds he was like he was in tiger fights every day because when they start mating you'd have to break him up after a while 450 pounds yeah. or something like that yeah. and he, was he was huge. he was massive so the first day he shows up like he knew all the owners i didn't know him so like they're like go fuck with mike so, <laughs> so all of a sudden i'm down there like guys at the desk are like he just fucking starts making a scene the guy's like you gotta come to the front desk i'm like what's up he goes look at the camera i'm like Oh fuck! Is he mad? They're like, this guy's pissed. He wants to talk to you. I'm like, oh fuck! So I go down. Here I am, a little pip squeak and a tie. This guy just mad. So I walk up. I'm like, what's up? He's like, are you Mike Ryan? I'm like, fuck yeah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, are you married? Did I do some of your wife or daughter? On the third time, my mind's racing. I'm like, fuck! Who? Oh, Jesus Christ! You know why is this guy so mad? He's like, what the fuck kind of place you run in here? This place is bullshit. You think you're all fucking tough guys? I'm like. What? Stop it. Settle down. I don't even fucking know you. He goes, oh, I'm going to fucking kill you. He's just going crazy. I'm like, F- I'm just sweating. beads of sweat, Bill. And all of a sudden, I see like the owners. They're in the pro shop. And all of a sudden, I see him like, giggling. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you motherfuckers. And he was, this guy was just like the nicest guy. He was so fucking huge and so cool. He was, oh, man. I was just like, Jesus Christ. I'm like, Jeep, I almost shit my pants. Literally, I was yeah. fucking scared to death of you. Yeah, so yeah. the original, yeah, the original yeah. Bane, right? Yeah, the original Bane. Yeah, one guy was actually, uh, he was a, he was a big tough guy. He was giving one, uh, one of the guys on the, on the counter, you know, he didn't want to check in all the time. The guy's like, you gotta check in. He's like, fuck you, you bust my balls. And he's like, you just gotta check in. And he was a big, you know, big fucking dude, big scary dude, you know? So he's like, I'm gonna like, beat the fuck out of you. He's telling the guy at the desk, all of a sudden, this guy, Jeep walked in. He's like, what'd you say? He's like, I'm going to fucking kill this guy. Literally. Jeep Swenson grabbed this guy by the neck. It, it was like a Hollywood scene. He had so much power. Squeezed the life out. And this guy was probably about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, Lifted him up. Grabbed him. Smashed his head against the wall while he was suspended like two feet in the air. And I was like, holy fuck. I'd never seen a guy so big <laughs> and so strong do that without, you know, wires. The guy dropped to the ground. He's like, ah, ah, ah. I said, you want a refund? He's like, nope, I'm never showing up again. Oh, shit. He just walked out of the door. That was one of the, yeah, one of the crazy scenes. I was like, man, that's, that's something you see in Hollywood. Yeah. It fucking happened. This guy was just big and strong. Damn. For, for how crazy gold is, it's amazing that it's still there. And then, Mark, if you can clarify exactly what happened, but like, wasn't like the city going to buy it? Or like somebody was going to buy it. And yeah, then- and Arnold, I think, helped come to the rescue, right? Uh, well, there's just recently. Yeah, I think someone was trying. They were trying to buy out the gym, right? They, well, uh, it's it's under um, Google's Google. Google, excuse me. Google bought the property, so they own all the property. You know what I mean? And they're, and they're thinking, well, maybe we could use this building. We may use this building. Blah blah blah. And all of a sudden, there was all this talk. We're like, oh fuck, what's going to happen? You know? And I'll just riding in, all smiling, happy. And I'm like, oh, there's probably a problem with the gym. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, all right. And then all of a sudden, hey, what happened to the sale? He's like. Google was presented, and they signed a long-term lease with Gold's Gym. No one knows what happened, you know? So I don't know what he did or what he interjected, but it was a quick another Arnold story. He was he loves to do pullovers, and the swing arm broke. So he calls me still. He's like, Mike, the swing arm was broke in the second room. I want the machine fixed. I'm like, I don't work here. Did you hear me? I'm like, all right, all right, all right. You know what I mean? So I call the fucking guys. I'm like, hey, you got to bring the swing arm. We can fix this fucking thing. He's going to yell at me about it. So I show up and, you know, the man, Joe, you know, Jose, he's there. He's like, well, the, the thing's broke, so we ordered a piece. So I'm like, so I see on him the next day. He's like, what's going on? I said, well, you know, they ordered it. It's going to be like probably. They called nope. the guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably going to be like four weeks to, to put it in. And, you know, they'll, they'll put it in once you get it. He's like, you have a FedEx? I'm like, yeah. He's like, it should be here tomorrow. <laughs> and he walks away. So I'm like. So here I am again. I don't even fucking work here. I'm like, Joe, why don't you fax this fucking part? They say, like, oh, they get a video, they get a manufacturer, they get a welded, they get a painter, blah, blah, blah. So you see on a day, he's like, Mike, where's my machine? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like buy it. they get to fix it, they get to weld it, they get a paint. He's like, I told you, we'll paint it, fat exit. I'm like, I'm like, so all of a sudden, I'm like, fuck. I'm like, aren't you going skiing? He's like, yes, I'm going skiing. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Drive me crazy, you know? So he goes away. So I tell these guys, I'm like, you got to get this fucking machine. You got to fix it. And it's like, the arm's broken. We don't know what to do. So I take It's an old one, right? It's a Nautilus with yeah. the chain, right? Yeah. That's yeah. like the greatest piece ever. Yeah. So all of a sudden, uh, I said, Arnold, some, I don't know what's going on. They said it's going to be a couple of weeks. He's like, <laughs> next day, on a crate, there's a brand new machine. It <laughs> just fucking shows up. I'm like, motherfucker, you get all the pull in the world. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Like, so does he still train there, like, oh, regularly? Yeah. Yeah, really? he's there every morning. He's there every morning, and, and it's funny. You know, people get so excited to see him, 
and he's just the coolest guy. And he's always just like, let me train. I'll see you outside. And if you're away from outside, he take pictures with everyone. You know what I mean? He's always cordial. He's always fun. And he loves, and he loves, one thing about all, he's a regular guy. You know what I mean? He loves fucking joking. He just, you know, one of the things I, you know, he was, he was training with this guy one time and this guy thought he was pretty big. Hmm. And I told him this goofy line. I'm like, oh, this guy's on muscle softness. I was like, muscle softness is fantastic. This is the greatest line I ever heard on my gun. You know, so every day for like, every day for like six months. How you doing? How's those muscle softeners? <laughs> He'd be walking by. Those muscle softeners are kicking in. He kept using it on everyone. <laughs> I'm like, finally, I'm like, Arnold, I got to give you a new line. You're beating the hell out of that one. He's like, yeah. no, nah, it's too fantastic. I'll use it all the time. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I seen him. I think That's it was great. on TV talking about the uh, the whole muscle lineup that you gave him. They like don't oh, get trapped oh, and all oh, that yeah, shit. It, oh, I was like, hey, you got that from Mike Ryan. I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. We, it, it, it was funny because it took for it was one of those mornings. He was there early, so I see him. He's just like sluggish. So he, he's walking this way. He's got his head down. So he walks to the right. I walk to the right. So he walks to the left. I walk to the left. He walks to the right. I walk to the right. He's like, come on. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> so I did the old. I said, hey, don't try to get by. Otherwise, you'd be trapped and dealt with. Arnold goes, oh, my fucking God. That's fantastic. <laughs> you, you have to teach me that. So every day we would go over to it. Then we go, we got to do more. We got to do more. That's how we even this. Absolutely, we won't be back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then, if, then one day he's just like, "Come on!" He'd be like, "But there is no end to the." You know, <laughs> every he day he going. Just, yeah, he yeah, he was just one of those things. He just absolutely loved. He lit up like a fucking scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, it was so cool seeing him do it on like TV or yeah. something. I can't remember what it was. It it's might the have been Kawhi Leonard one. Is that what it is? It was uh, with Kawhi Leonard, yeah. and I forgot the the brand, but I saw that. That was they did a whole ad for um, ESPN and the Terminator. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Terminator. I was going to say Terminator. Yeah. 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 Funny stuff. That's fucking cool. <laughs> Do you ever have any uh, issues with motivation? Because you've been training for a really long ass time. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like everyone getting out ruts, you know? And it's just like, for me, it only happened like, oh, this fucking kid. I started feeding cats because all the fires, all these cats started showing up. So I figured I'd feed them. I got to feed them because they'll keep them yowling and ruin the tape, right? <laughs> it, it doesn't matter. I mean,. <laughs> Whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. I call him bouncer. He's, he sits on the door. He's fearless. Like, doesn't let anyone in. Fights all the dogs in the neighborhood. Wow. <laughs> and I'm allergic <laughs> to cats, too. Yeah. Oh, shit. No, no. Yeah. But it's, actually, uh, you know, on, on that subject of motivation, on the periods that, like, maybe you've lacked it or you have been able to work out for a while, does anything kind of happen to you? Because, like, for oh, me. Oh, yeah. Well, well yeah. Look, that's the first thing. Depression sets it. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? You're like, oh, my God. I'm, and I, you don't want to sound like a dick, but I'm, wow, I, this is what it feels like to be a regular person. This sucks. <laughs> you know? It, yeah, right. It does. It's like when, when you have injuries or you're just tired, you're sick, you're fatigued, you're beat up, and you take one, two, three, four days, you're like, Fuck! I haven't done anything. I I feel worthless. My 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 self worth is at an all time low. Yeah, that same thing happens to me. That's why I can't stop. Yeah, isn't it amazing how um like imagine if you didn't if you didn't exercise. You know, it's like it's crazy. It seems like you would have uh like endless amounts of time. But what do people say that don't exercise? Like I don't have time for that. Uh, of course, you're like, what the fuck do you do with yourself? Yeah, I know. It's I mean, a, I know people work a lot, but Jesus, yeah, make I, some time. Well, for when it. everyone says that to me, I said, "There's 24 hours in a day. We'll break down your day as." As best you can. You work, what, 12 hours? It gives me 12 hours. You sleep, what, eight hours? It gives me four hours. What are you doing in those four-hour time period? Well, I got kids. Three hours. I still get 60 minutes of your time. What are you going to do? There's no way. You, right. There's no, there's no excuse. Well, and also, too, not everyone, you know, it's, it would be really rare that you work uh, 12 hours every single day. Oh, yeah. Of you course, know? yeah, absolutely. You got weekends or yeah. something, and that yeah. would be at least two training sessions you could sneak in right Definitely. there. Yeah. So how do you... Uh, how, how do you get your clients to bounce back then if they're they kind of like hey i haven't talked to you in like a week obviously that means you're not doing good because nobody stops talking to you because they're doing great yeah sure it's the same old thing it's just you gotta find trigger switches on everybody you know what i mean what's going to trigger you know a lot of guys that i work with you know what i mean they're especially now during award season i'm like oh you producers directors you guys be on the red carpet you don't want to be photographed with seven chins let's fucking let's pick oh, it up yeah. You know what I mean? Because those publications are everywhere. Yeah. And the first time you fuck up, you know what they're going to look for? The shittiest picture of you to put out there. So don't give them the ammunition. Yeah. What, what kind of advice do you have for like personal trainers? People that train people like you do in person because nowadays, you know, it's, it, it is kind of tough to be a trainer. But yeah. you're doing it at a very high level. So okay. to be able to move in that way. How, what, well, the one thing I always tell people, and I said, I think you are your best business card. Lead by example. You know what I mean? It's for me. 
everyone is visual. And that's how I that's how I got my career. That's how people still approach me. Like the other day, this fitness girl, she's like, you have a great ass. I'm like, oh, fuck, thanks. <laughs> and all of a sudden, she's like, I got to train with you at least one day a week to get your ass. I'm like, fantastic. So anyone, who's, anyone who wants to get in this profession, knowledge is great. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's fantastic to have all this knowledge, but people want to be inspired. And how you're going to inspire them is by leading by example. And that, that's, I think that's a testament of the whole, the whole profession. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a super cool feeling, too, when you go out to eat with people, even if you're eating with people that aren't in the fitness industry, and you have your order go in first, and everyone kind of tailors their order. You yeah. notice the whole table, yeah. you know, in their head, they were going to get the grilled cheese oh. and French fries <laughs> totally. and shit. And the second you ordered a clean meal, they're yeah. like, oh, I'm going to order. But it shifts the whole table, and it's an inspiration and a motivational for people. But the downside is you don't get invited to dinners anymore. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, that fucking asshole didn't even have a drink. Absolutely. I had so many guys are like, we were going to fight you over, but you, we would have felt like shit, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> Yeah, how about uh like family and stuff like whether you got relatives and stuff like i know for for me personally like because i'm in this space they do come to me but then when i do kind of push the information out they they just like ah, i don't you know fuck you like i'm not gonna listen to you because you're my cousin you're my yeah. brother whatever it is have you had a hard time like trying to help uh, people well, close to you well my family's pretty good you know my mom she she likes her desserts and whatever she's almost 80 so you know my dad's almost 80 so they're they're fine they, 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 you know i mean they exercise regularly they're great examples my brothers are pretty fit so they're they're, they're cool i have younger cousins and uh you know my cousins have kids now those kids are super excited to train they write me all the time you know what i mean it's like this younger generation because of the because of the instagram because everyone is so fit in and it's in your face all day long that it's it's super competitive, mm-hmm. so they're they're looking at like Uncle Mikey, can you do this? Uncle Uncle Mikey, I get this guy, I want to get this bench up. Uncle Mikey, and even when I uh, like when I go home, we're talking about the high school football hall of fame. I I get high school kids all the time from my old high school and college still writing me. It's like, hey, we know you went here, and uh, this is what we want to do. I want to increase my forty. I want to increase my vertical. What well, can you help me? I'm like, sure, absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. Because I think because social media, it's so more prevalent. That are people, uh, they're really trying to make the gains they want. Yeah, we, we talk about social media because I know Encima was saying, you know, when you were like, uh, he, was, he was already developing a lot of strength and he felt fantastic. But if he had social media around to be like, oh, I feel great, but man, I'm not even a quarter as strong as this guy. Yeah. It might have pushed him the other way. But I think what you just said is like the positive side of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's, it is more prevalent. People are like, oh, wait, I do want to look like that. Like my, uh, I think he's only like eight years old, my nephew. He couldn't care less about my 300 pound deadlift. He like, it just doesn't, it doesn't matter. Sure. But he's seen my physique, and he was just like, you have abs? Yeah. And he was freaking out. He's like, how did you do that? And so I was like, that's really interesting that, like, because of a picture, it might push him now to kind of, like, really be Be more more fit. Yeah. And what what I was saying there was, like, it would have pushed me in the direction of wanting to take stuff. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Because it's like, I've been lifting since I was 13. I didn't get on the internet and social media until I was, like, 19 or something. So I got time to, like, get big. Yeah. But all these kids, a lot of guys message me. They're, like, 16 starting, right? And they're, like, fuck, man. How am I going to do this for so long? It's going to take so long to do that. Mm -hmm. Can I just, what can I take to get bigger? I know. I, I, um, I can only re- relate to my personal experience. I was in, you know, being a goal is drugs were rampant. I mean, it's, it's no mystery. They're rampant. I mean, temptation was everywhere. But I was uh, super fortunate enough that Bill Phillips saw me one day training. And well, his photographer did. And he said, uh, we'd like to shoot you, but you got to take a drug test. And I'm like, well, what are you testing for? <laughs> you know what I mean? Natural question. He's like, steroids. I'm like, well, I can... Check that off. I can pass that one. Yeah. yeah. So I was, uh, so right after that, I took my drug test, Bill did a test shoot, and I was the EAS, uh, EAS cover guy for, what, eight years or something. But that was a reward. Was really smart on his part. Too. It was. Oh, my God. I, it, it's weird. No one else like thought of that. I know. But he wanted someone that can really represent the company. This is the results you could possibly get with these products yep. without taking a bunch of other yeah. shit. And he did. I mean, he would uh, film our drug tests and he would put it, either put it on a video and show people or you document in the magazines. And then, yeah, and he just found guys that would want to work hard, take his products and, and believe in the systems that he implemented. And we did it. And it was, uh, so I was rewarded, mm-hmm. which was the coolest thing because, you know, I mean, the temptation was great, especially at Gold's Gym. You know I mean? You, you train every day. All of a sudden you see this guy's like, ah, he's a hundred buck, buck 50 soaking wet. Gold's Gym six months later is fucking 220 shredded. You're like, 
fuck, I can't compete with these fucking guys, you know? Mm -hmm. And the drugs were rampant in the 90s. I mean, when you go in that third gym, in the third room, in, in, the, in the wall and back, it's just, sadly, it's, it's like an obituary column. You know what I mean? These guys, they did so much, so fast, so hard. You know, and, and and like when Arnold competed, the heavy he was like two twenty five, and went from two twenty five to three hundred pounds. There was like like a very small progression, but all of a sudden, everyone wanted to be over three hundred pounds and compete at like two or three percent body fat. Mm -hmm. And sadly enough, I mean the proof was in the pudding. It was just it, the body couldn't take it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, do you find social media? Uh motivating you know a lot of times we get in the habit of talking about the negatives of it and of course there's giant uh giant rabbit hole you can climb down with it being negative but do you find it to be motivating because if you post something now and you're in this shape yeah you really it's kind of kind of sucks when you're not in that you know when you kind of yeah. sucks when you're not it's, holding that that uh level that you got right. to yeah it, it's a double-edged sword you know what i mean with everything with the good comes the bad you know what i mean when you and it's, I mean, you try and be as honest as possible when you have a fan base. Like, all right, this I am. I'm, I've been struggling. I've been staying at two thirty. I'm heavier, but my weights are going up. So this is cool. I'm digging life. You know, what I mean, the people are like, oh, that's great. Lift as much as you can. Then you get all the people like, oh, you're a fat fuck, anyways. You know, <laughs> it's it just comes with the territory. That's usually me. Yeah. <laughs> then, oh, you're you're Mark Bell. <laughs> yeah. So it always comes with the territory. And with social media, you you try and be honest and and put things out there that people can relate to and aspire to and. You know, and, and kind of get encouraged by. But, you know, there's always going to be the people that just, you know, you're a fucking asshole. You know, just that's there's just angry people out there. Yeah, that's yeah, because he hooked up with all their girlfriends. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, there's that. I do, I do want to know this, though, because like I see uh, like all the dope ass figurines that you oh, have yeah, around totally. your house. Yeah. Right. Like, first off. For me, you know, I watched Dragon Ball Z as a kid and I watched all this stuff and that kind of stuff actually got me into this. Sure. So what, like, w like, what's all this about? Yeah, you? like, I mean, I, I'm born in 1966. There was no internet. There was no, there was comic books. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? That's, the, but TV was only three channels and yeah. half it was all news, you know? <laughs> so we just, we just had comic books and, and that's what you want to do is like, oh man, what can I relate to? Well, Superman's unstoppable. He's cool. And mm -hmm. you get the X-Men. They all have personal problems. You know yeah. what I mean? I can fucking relate to this, but they can, they can battle their demons and you get the Fantastic Four and you get, you know, the Avengers. They're just regular guys that just want to be above and beyond. So, yeah, the total inspiration. Yeah. How about like the physiques of the superheroes these days? Uh, oh, God. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I, I've had a it's just funny. You know, I don't want to. It's 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 a different time. Mm -hmm. I think I would hate to be a kid right now because who are your role models? I mean, growing up, I was like I was fortunate. I mean, you watch TV. Yeah. You had Schwarzenegger, you had Stallone. Oh. You had. You know, you had everyone who was bigger than life. They just trained hard and, and, and led by example. And it was super cool. But there's been such a dynamic of, you know what I mean, Hollywood being so politically correct that, that is, is it, you know what I mean? You watch The Last Avengers. You look at Hulk, the, the, the unstoppable machine. Hulk becomes a vegan, doesn't want to fight. Right. Captain America leads a support group for crying men. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Iron Man dies and his, and his wife takes over. Uh, Thor becomes a fat, angry drunk. I mean, w w come on. There's, there's going to be a whole generation of boys out there like, well, who do I look forward to? Where, where are my idols going to come from? You know what I mean? And yeah. Toxic masculinity. Yeah. Though. Yeah. I mean, it's like, oh, enough. All right. Please. You know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's overwhelming. It's, and it's, like I said, and they, they throw it in your face. Yeah. You know, they do. literally throw it in your face. Well, let me add, with this, with that said, like, moving forward because you're going to be training and training people for a long time like what's the effect that you want to have or like how do you want to influence do you want to influence the younger generation in that way or what's yeah oh, absolutely you know what i mean um like like when i do camps and stuff i always encourage kids to come out and and, and i just say grab something that you can relate to grab something that you, that you can see yourself in you know and a lot of kids you know they just like I, I I refer like all my nephews. I said, you guys, you don't know, pick up an old comic book or something. Pick up something that was fun. Watch watch the eighties. You know, watch watch Bloodsport. You know, yeah, watch yeah. all these watch all these <laughs> fun movies where the guy was just an underdog and he tried hard. The Karate Kid, he tried hard. They always overcame massive obstacles, and they, and they were just great role models. But uh, and I'm and I'm looking at TV. You know, these days I'm like, actually, what 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 what, is, what does a young male aspire to? I mean, where's I mean, who's your who's your son look up to besides you probably? Uh, my dad, 
You yeah. know, he's lucky he's got my my dad there, but yeah, yeah. It, but, but you, you but, need you need a role model. Yeah, you know? but but when we were kids, I mean, Terminator came out. We all got Terminator haircuts, right? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were just like, oh, I want to fucking smash through everything. You know what I mean? We had we had these we had these uh, idols that we just loved and and just aspired to be. You know, just my kids don't watch TV. Yeah, you know, I don't yeah. I don't know if I don't know if a lot of kids are wa- even watching TV at all. Yeah, probably it's just all quick YouTube segments. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it's all st- yeah, yeah stuff on their phone and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So I guess if they can find someone they can emulate and. You know, some medium, some form of medium, that's great. But, mm-hmm. boy, I just think this is the lost generation of young males out there. But just, you know, they're really getting tossed aside. Yeah. Well, awesome, man. Uh, what What do you have coming up? you have anything... Uh Anything on the horizon? Um, well, let, traveling anywhere, anything like that? Yeah, hopefully. I I, I got a hire by a, a very successful uh, Chinese uh, lady. She's a legit, you know, uber wealthy, and you know they put me on a boat and travel the Mediterranean. Yeah, super fun, super wild, super cool. Wow. Yeah, it was it was awesome. It was it was just dynamic. How did that come? To, like through social media of all things. You know, they, they, I got this crazy email, would you mind spending uh, 32 days at sea aboard this super yacht Titanic? I'm like, I'm thinking it's your brother. I'm like, ah, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But I'm like, ah, it shouldn't be that mean. I'm like, oh, yeah, tell me more details. So all of a sudden, this, this person reached out to me. And it was a funny thing. It's like, we have a client. We can't divulge who it is. But they would like to uh, train you aboard this boat. I'm like, looking at the boat. I'm like, fuck. It's like you have a contract. Yeah, I sent them a contract. Day late, it came back, signed everything. I'm like, wow. It's like, but we we really don't want to divulge who it is. But uh, but but uh, uh, you know, they're talking. All of a sudden, I heard. Well, I think Jackie Chan will like him. And I heard in the background. I'm like, did they say fucking Jackie Chan? So I don't say anything. You know what I mean? Because you know, you're not supposed to say anything. I'm big, deep down inside, I'm like, it's gonna be so fucking cool. You know? Yeah. So they fly me to Italy. I'm outside Naples, waiting for the. You know what I mean? Be on this boat. This boat shows up, and it is massive. There's a crew of 22 people all lined up, and immaculate outfits and i walk in i'm introduced myself and all of a sudden i'm like who's on board they're like oh they'll be driving up soon they drive up all of a sudden this this lady comes out and you know she doesn't even speak english she's all chinese and her, her daughter and her son and she's like you know they talk and translate it's like oh this is her son jackie chan i'm like oh fuck you know jackie chan you're jackie chan <laughs> <laughs> you know but it was cool so i'm telling everyone who you was i'm turning jackie chan oh my god that's god that's wild that's great i didn't have to didn't have that to tell him it's yeah. not the jackie chan yeah, honey yeah. dicked. Damn it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, still, the experience. Oh, that's oh, yeah. fucking sick. Yeah, it was amazing. It was funny. The, the week prior, Wahlberg rented this boat. So he had he left heavy dumbbells, kettlebells, nice. and had them install a chin up bar in the engine room, which was wow. awesome because so the engine room was like 110 degrees. So you're so tra- training Jackie Chan on Mark Wahlberg's boat. Yeah, <laughs> totally. And then I ran into Magic Johnson in San Tropez. <laughs> Who's uh, the toughest person that you trained? Like, who. who uh, who took to it the best and oh, worked the hardest? Just Dwayne, without a doubt. Yeah, he just yeah, he's an animal. You know what I mean? It's 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 funny because he wants to break you so to lead by example, but he couldn't break me. But we had uh, his um his brother in law Hiram who now works for him, but we crushed him every day. And Dwayne would just love it. You know what I mean? He goes, "I'll fucking crush anyone." I'm like, "I'm right with you." You know what I mean? And, yeah, and he he'd be like, "I'm up at four. I I, I knew he'd get up at three fifty. Mm-hmm. Just to fuck with, so I'm like, I gotta have a 345. I gotta be there. You know what I mean? So wherever the car was waiting, I would always be waiting on the car. And he'd be like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Is there something that that he does or that he did that somebody might not know that led to so much of his of his success? It, no, it's it's, it's no mystery. It's hard work. It's hard work. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean, everything he professes on Instagram, it's no fucking joke. You know what mm-hmm. I mean, you get up, you can never outbeat his post. Be like, all right, I'm going to get up at three o'clock, see if he's already up. It's like, fuck, he's already up and done. Mm-hmm. God, bastard. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and, 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 and it's a testament to his character. You know, he just works hard at everything he does. Yeah. I was going to say, so who did, uh, we had compared The Rock's Instagram to someone else's Instagram and we were like, who's cool? Like, which one's more has like more mystique, or which one's cooler? I can't remember who we John were. John Cena. Is that who? Uh, yeah, because like, John so posts random. random shit. Yeah, I don't know. So, what do you think? Do you like all the stuff that he posts on Instagram, though? Oh, Dwayne. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think it's fun. Yeah, yeah. totally. I mean, a, a lot of people just love it and they suck it up. And I mean, it, and you go to the gym and everyone's wearing Project Rock gear. You know what I mean? So he yeah. ins- he's inspiring thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. You know, a lot of what you're saying about like training celebrities, right? Um, a lot of people want to be celebrity trainers like 
dealing with celebrities specifically. Yeah. It seems that like you did that organically. Yeah. And that seems like something that'd be fairly difficult to try to do organically yeah. nowadays. How would you suggest someone try to do it, that? It is. I mean, it's, it's all timing it, but it's people have to believe in you because they're going to be vulnerable. And as a celebrity, you're high profile. So all my relationships I've known, you know what I mean? Like Dwayne broke into wrestling in 92. I was mm. the GM. When he first showed up, I took him to lunch. So it wasn't until... 98, six years later of actual friendship yeah. that he knew he can trust me. You know what I mean? So it, it's, it's all about trust. And it was funny. I, I referred one guy to this job. I can't name the celebrity, but he was just like, oh, he was such a, he was just drunk every day and I didn't want to train him. And I told him it. So he quit. And I said, that's why I sent you out there. You're supposed to help him. It's not about you trying to further your career to do this. Sometimes these jobs are gritty. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I, I had to work with, I, I, again, I probably don't want to mention names, but this celebrity, I, Go to her house, literally had to pull her out of bed. You know what I mean? Yes. I mean, with all the good, you have the bad. You know what I mean? This lady was, you're a motherfucking asshole. Get the fuck out of my house, blah, blah, blah. Crying two minutes later. You can't leave. You can't leave. You know what I mean? There's a lot of emotional strain that comes with this job because you're dealing with people. And if they're successful, a lot of times their whole life, they've just been pampered to and they never hear no. So when this lady's like, I want to sleep in, I'm like, no, get the fuck up. You know what I mean? They don't hear that. So they don't know how to respond like a regular person. Mm -hmm. So they're volatile. They're throwing shit at you. And I'm just like, why am I here? You know what I mean? Then I'm here for a reason. You know, I'm here to make this person's life better. And that's basically the bottom line. Yeah. Awesome, man. Always fun uh, running into you. Always. uh, Yeah, definitely. Let people know where they can find you. Yeah, just Mike underscore Ryan underscore celebrity trainer. Let's uh, watch some old football tapes, huh? Oh, I got them all. I got my Price is Right tape. And, and my Love Connection tape. <laughs> I did every cheesy show in the 80s. Andrew, where can people find you? Uh, at I am Andrew Z. Make sure you guys are following the podcast on Instagram, at Mark Bell's Power Project, um, Twitter, TikTok, and I think that's it, for, at, at MB Power Project. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Mixer, Twitch, all over the damn place, but for sure, make sure you are subscribed on iTunes and please rate and review. Uh, and Sima, where are you at? And Sima Yang on Instagram and YouTube. And Sima Yang on TikTok and Twitter. Mark, I'm at Mark Smelly Bell on Grinder. Yeah, <laughs> and I saw that profile and everywhere. Nice. And everywhere how come? You, how come you haven't hit me up back yet? I mean, come on. <laughs> you know, I, I know. sent you three winks and a hug and a kiss. I'm a little fed up. Little, uh, you know what we got to do before the next. Uh, what's that shit? We got to talk about grooming of this of this grizzled beard. Of uh, this beard? Yeah, you got to groom it. Well, well I got, it's, it's got to be it's got to be thinner wait. here. I know, but no, I got to no, wait. No, you can't wait. I got to wait a little. You, bit you're looking more. homeless. You can't. I can't. I can't look at you nah, anymore. I can go homeless look, for a little bit. These are my eyes. You're burning my eyes to death. You used to be <laughs> a handsome guy. <laughs> I know. I'm trying. Oh, I'm God trying damn something you. different. No, let's let me help you. Look at me. I'm ridiculously handsome. I know. So let me <laughs> let me not, show you the way. <laughs> I know how to help. All right. We'll trim shave, it. We'll, shave me up. We'll start it slow. We'll keep it light here. We'll get a little more fuller down here. Keep, but keep yeah, it. <laughs> a little. You know, <laughs> it's a little lineup actually. A little lineup. That's it. Yeah. We'll get, nah, we'll see. We'll get you sorted. <laughs> strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch y'all later. <laughs>